All right, folks. So we're going to go through um, a little bit of this transcript. Uh, now, this is a very long transcript. I will put the link to this uh, at, in the description of this video so you can go through. I just wanted to point out some inconsistencies here. Now, as you can see, this is the first official interview by Brendan Dassey at Mishicot High School on the 27th of February, 2006. And it involves investigator Mark Wiegert and Special Agent Tom Fossbender. Now, as you can see, Tom Fossbender, he loves to talk. You'll notice this throughout the entire body of the statement. But this is the part that gets me, is right here. I have a feeling there's some things on your mind, and I just want to give you that opportunity to talk about them. That is very telling. Uh, you know, what was the catalyst? It's like I asked in the first video, what was the catalyst for them going? Oh, so you just got a cop's gut feeling, huh? Um, you know, he talks some more, talks more. We're not here to hurt anyone. You know, don't worry, blah, blah. At which point Brennan says that he's worried that he's gone and I can't see him. He's talking about Steven. Um, you know, and he goes on to describe sort of the nature of their relationship. And we'll discuss that specific uh, statement in another video. And here, Fossbender says, no, Brendan, we know that on Halloween you were with him and helped him to tend to a fire and stuff like that behind the garage. Anything that you saw that night that's been bothering you. And if you built the fire and we believe that's where Teresa was cooked. Look at that word. That's a scary word for a 16 year old who's never been involved with the with the law before, never had trouble with the law before. And now all of a sudden He's being reminded that on the, his property, his home property, a young lady was murdered brutally. And this is a very incendiary remark on, on Detective Fossbender's part. So you read through some more of this, you know, he's telling him some branches, a cabinet and some tire. Uh-huh. Did you see any body parts? Nothing is right here. I'm guessing that Brendan just shook his head. Says, you know, if you think you saw something in fire and it's starting to bother you and or you're feeling bad about it, the only way you're ever going to end it is if you talk about it. You know, so now he's leading him. Did you see something? I think you saw something. And Brendan's over there thinking, did I? Did I see something? What did I see? Because memory is funny like that. Memory is really weird. We'll talk about that in a subsequent video and, and what it does to you. You know, he talks about some garbage that he helped uh, Stephen bring out from his garage to set fire to. And, you know, I'm just, I'm going to scroll through. Notice, Fossbender loves to go on his monologues. Loves his monologues, does Fossbender. He seems to love to hear his, himself talk, kind of like me. But at least mine's productive. Um, you know, this is an interesting point to note. Brendan seems to change his stories from interview to interview to interview. But notice this. They ask him what time he went back in the house after the bonfire. 1030. Down here, Wiegert, the little sidekick who could, says, you said you went in at 10 or 1030. Brendan says 1030. Because he knows he knows what he knows. And, you know, they go on to discuss uh, what else Stephen had in his garage. Why are they questioning him so closely about the garage? Didn't see anything in that fire? No other vehicle? Can you tell me some of the other things? You see these dots right here? This means that Brendan answered and somebody omitted it from the record. You'll see that a lot throughout the course of this statement. Then Fossbender says, what else is bothering you? I'm trying to find a girlfriend. Does this sound like a young man that's just confessed to helping his uncle cover up something very important? Like a murder? Yeah, I didn't think so. And they talk a little bit about his girlfriend and the breakup uh, just to sort of establish a bit more trust, I feel. That was Fossbender and Wiegert's whole point 
was to establish trust with Brendan so that they could then go back and use that trust and misuse that trust. Brendan, we know that Steve told you to say certain things when the police came and talked to you. I know that. We've been told that. What did Steve tell you to tell, tell us? At which point Brendan says not to say stuff. What kind of stuff? Like don't talk. And this has been bl blotted out. It says, did he tell you what to say? Notice no dots. I'm, I'm willing to believe that Brendan just shook his head at that point. Don't talk. That conversation could have taken place any time between the day that Teresa went missing and the day that Stephen Avery was arrested. You know, like, don't talk to the cops. Don't, they're, they're just going to mess everything up. That sounded more like caution in the interest of avoiding a second erroneous conviction than it does covering anything up to me. Then you see Wiegert go on one of his little diatribes. We need you to be 100% honest. So far, you're not being honest. We're going to see this theme a lot more throughout their dealings with Brendan, folks. Boss Bender again. Well, when we were up north, he was trying to hide when the cops came. And we know this. Um, they say here that burn pit, Brendan, was no bigger than this table. That is erroneous. That's a lie. That burn pit is huge. Um... You know, and again, you hear, you see Weigert come in like the little, you know, puppy. We'll go to bat for you, but you have to be honest with us. Tell us the truth exactly. At which point, Brendan says something else and they've omitted it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to scroll uh, really quick through some of these pages. I, I trust that you will go and read it for yourself. Uh, and I'm scrolling through these pages very quickly because I like to get the bottom of this, uh, of this statement, because I want you to notice something very interesting at the bottom of the statement. Uh, it's just incongruous to, to everything that they're trying to do here. Now, uh, let's see. This is a very long statement, folks. I'm terribly sorry for how long this is. Okay. So here at the bottom of the statement, I'm just going to scroll back up to get to the point where it should where it should be. They've already talked with Brendan. They have already, uh, you know, gotten him to to fill out a form and to write down his statement. And the whole time he's writing a statement, you know, they're sitting there saying, "Well." You said this and this. Would you like to add that in? And you said this and this. Would you like to add that in? And they're sort of leading him to write down the story the way they want it told, this beautiful little fairy tale. At which point they say, you need something, call us, okay? And at the end of this, it says, this is the end of the interview. And it says, I then requested Brendan to fill out a written statement, which Brendan did and signed. After Brendan finished with the written statement, Special Agent Fossbender contacted Brendan's mother, Barbara, after and requested that she come to the high school to meet with us. It should be noted that Brendan requested that he be able to go back to his eighth hour class, which he was allowed to do. Now, here's my thing, folks, and don't worry about him. He's just kind of pissy right now. I think he's getting in his two-year molars. Anyway, Brendan just, according to this statement, confessed to having helped his uncle burn Teresa Halcott's body. Halbach, excuse me. Not only that, but he claimed in the narrative that he saw the body and that he watched it burn. And yet he's emotionally stable enough to go to class. Something about that does not sound right to me. I'm sorry, but it doesn't. Anybody else would not have been emotionally stable enough. And in fact, further up, you scroll up on this, scroll up this way, and you'll see where they try to talk him into going home after this. You know, oh, well, I'll call your mom and she'll come get you and, and you should go home and rest. You know, this has been a pretty big day for you. Uh, at which point Brendan says, no, I'm good. I just want to go to class. 
You know, they're trying to make him go home to make their version of events look more plausible. 